Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA. I make videos for NFL. All these videos, they get posted right here on this subreddit. It's called DF Sports with one S. I make updates with all the news that comes out throughout the day. Anything you need, I'll reply to you on this subreddit as well. Questions about the slate, if you just want to say what's up, um, I'll be in here before lock. And uh, you can message me on Reddit if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, or you can message me on Twitter if it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but yeah, let's go over this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 game slate for the 29th. Um, but before we do that, um, if you are interested in joining my Discord, I'll have a link to that down below where I have, you know, in-depth content going over each slate, player pools for cash and GPPs, cores, night slate videos, night slate cores, showdown cores, just anything you could possibly need, that'll be linked down below. All right, let's get into this seven game slate for tomorrow. Um, but before I do that, I show you guys my results every single night so you can gauge how I'm doing as a player. Unfortunately, I forgot to pull up my lineup before the slate starts, but I'm dead on the main slate. That's why I'm making this video early. Um, so not going to cash on main, but my my core just absolutely nuked the slate. Like, absolutely insane core today. And I played Terry Rozier and Jalen Brunson. I was synced from the beginning. Just synced from the beginning. Um, the core that I had for today, you can just look, man. It just absolutely nuked. Um, Alper and Sengen was a core play for me. Absolutely nuked. Kyle Lowry was a core play for me. He absolutely nuked. Um, who else? Kevin Love was a core play for me. He absolutely nuked. And Josh Richardson was a core play for me. He absolutely nuked. So I'd, I nailed the core. I just put some shit around it. I played, um, who did I play? I played Jalen Brunson, bust. I played Terry Rozier, bust. I played, who else did I round it up? That's four, five, six, so I need two more. Who else was in my lineup? Um, oh, Jabari Smith. I, I believe he had a decent game. Um... Yeah, he had a good game, Jabari Smith, and then, um, who was the last one? Maybe I can pull up the NBA and see what the games were today, so I can tell you guys. Um, RJ Barrett, RJ Barrett, who had a decent game, but terrible shooting, terrible shooting. He was absolutely nuking, just unlucky there, so... Yeah, not going to cash on the main showdown. Going pretty well. Um, I basically locked Andrew Wiggins, Harrison Barnes, Gary Payton, Steph, um, Sabonis, Fox, um, Clay. I played some Clay. So we'll see how showdown goes. Hopefully I can salvage my day over there. All right, Washington and Orlando. So Orlando, really, really tough matchup. Orlando's just been really, really good defensively this year. So I don't have too much interest in Washington on the slate. Um, just tough, 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 tough spot overall. And Washington's kind of been trolling with the rotation, so I just don't really have too much interest in this team. Now, Kuzma is the safest of the bunch. The offense will basically be ran through him. We did see Jordan Poole also get benched as well. Um, Kuzma, stat sheet stuffer, uh, he's always in play for tournaments for me. Like, he does have this type of ceiling, but going up against Orlando, not the ideal spot. I want to be playing almost 9K Kuzma, so more of a contrarian play for me. Jordan Poole, I mean, the, the this game against Detroit, I mean, I played him here too. And the stuff he did, just it was absolutely wild. And for DraftKings to move up his price point after that game... Whoever did the pricing, it's probably an algorithm, just deserves to be fired. Um, but yeah, hard, hard to get to Jordan Poole on this slate. Denny, minutes all over the place, but normally a guy like the solid rebounder, just more of a large field tournament player for me. Tyus Jones, his minutes kind of all over the place. It's just, it's just really, really disgusting. So it's, it's really hard to trust anyone here. Not a good spot for Gaffer. I mean, it's an okay spot going up against like Goga, Mo. Um he would honestly be my favorite play on this team if I did have to pick one. Like, they don't have too many bigs, so, like, 
Gafford's going to have to play around 30 minutes if the game stays close and he doesn't get into foul trouble. Solid rebounder. So I guess I don't mind Gafford. I think he's priced right, but definitely probably my favorite player on this Washington team. You couldn't pay me to play Danilo Gallinari, but I will mention him. He'll get high teens minutes. You couldn't pay me to play Corey Kispert, but I'll mention him. He'll get high teens minutes. Has to the shot storage value. They're, they're just overpriced. Um, cool Bale. I mean, he'll get decent run regardless, but feels priced right. It's just very, very unappealing. Washington, that is. Now, Orlando, on the other hand, now really, really good spot. Like Washington, they play super fast. They don't play too much defense. So really good spot for these Orlando guys. Unfortunately, they are priced up a bit, but I mean, you still got to have some interest in. So Paolo, 8-2. Good rebounder, can stuff the stat sheet, playing huge minutes, phenomenal matchup. I like him quite a bit. I still think 8-2 is a reasonable price point. So like Paolo, France is fine. I think I'd rather just get up to Paolo, but he does have this type of ceiling and he's also a solid rebounder. So the floor is pretty high with him. Um, so I don't mind him. I think I'd rather just get up to Paolo, though at a similar price point. Both the guards, they're probably both going to play around 30 minutes. Really, really good spot. Um, both priced up. They're not Really, really good plays, but I still think they're solid at their respective price points. Factoring price, I think I'd rather probably play Cole Anthony just because the ceiling is much, much higher on Cole. But I think they're both still okay to solid at their price points. And then Goga, Mo, these two guys will split the center minutes. Goga and uh, Master Foul Trouble last game. You guys know I always like to target Daniel Gafford. Um, he just gives up so many fantasy points to opposing bigs. So I, I like Goga. Um, for tournaments. I don't think a lot of people are going to be on him tomorrow. Good point per minute guy. Should play around 30 minutes as long as he doesn't get into foul trouble. So yeah, I'd like me some go-go quite a bit. Um, one of my more favorite plays in the mid-range just because the matchup is so good. And then Mo, if, if Goga is going to be popular, I think Mo is an interesting pivot in tournaments because if Goga gets into like any sort of foul trouble, he'll be the guy who benefits. He's actually a better point per minute guy than Goga as well. So if you gave like, like Here's the thing. If I knew, like, Mo played, if they split the 48, 24-24, um, um, hopefully that math's right. If I knew, like, they split the, t the 48, I would much rather play Mo. But I think more often than not, Goga is going to play, like, 30 minutes, and then Mo will get the rest. But, yeah, I, I definitely have interest in both of the Orlando Big tomorrow. Couldn't pay me to play guys like Gary Harris, Anthony Black, so we'll just move on to the Lakers. So I believe AD is probable, LeBron is probable or questionable, but he's going to be playing here. I mean, it's a really good spot. So I think Anthony Davis should just be able to feast here. Um, I think he's a pretty good spend up. Looking at these spend ups on this slate, I mean, it's tough. We'll monitor the news with Kevin Durant. We'll monitor the news with Jokic. Um, you have Embiid, who's been phenomenal so far. Devin Booker but could become an elite play. So it's kind of tough, but... First look, I think AD does look good. I'd much rather play him over LeBron. We do have Cam Reddish coming back, so that's going to take a hit to Austin Reeves. So um, hard for me to pay that price point for Reeves, where he's probably going to lose a little bit of minutes with Cam Reddish coming back. Also, with Reddish coming back, Max Christie becomes out of play for me. Torian Prince also gets a hit. Also a bit overpriced, so hard to go there. D'Lo, mm, don't love it. And then, uh, yeah, Rui's out, so, like, maybe Wood gets a little bit of a boost. I actually do have interest in Wood. If we get, like, around 22 minutes again from him, now, he did play in the blowout here, but with Rui out, I would assume he'd get a little bit more run. Like, say we get, like, 22, 23 minutes of Wood, I think he's firmly in play. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for the Lakers. I think main interest here, Anthony Davis. Um, Cam Reddish himself, I think, plays big minutes as long as he's not on a limit. He will be a solid value. So main interest will be AD Reddish and Christian Wood, I think, is interesting for uh, tournaments there. All right, Detroit. So Cade, I mean, it's a really good spot up against the Lakers. Guards against the Lakers still been doing pretty well this season. She'll play big minutes as long as the game stays close. Um, you know, this team is kind of balanced right now, but... I like Cade quite a bit at the top, even at 8-5. I think Durant's another pretty solid play at 6-9. Really good point per minute, really good rebounder. Um, can get you defensive stats. So I I, I like Durant quite a bit. Also, Thompson's very safe. Does take a hit with the rebounding with Durant back. Because I don't think a lot of people understood. Which is why I haven't been on as high on him of late. But still playable. And then Jaden Ivey, I think, is just still too cheap. Um, playing low 30s minutes now, he's in the starting lineup, solid point per minute. Um, if he does have a sh bad shooting game, though, he, he does have a low floor. I expect him will probably be popular tomorrow, but for good reason. I still think he's too cheap. I still think he's a very, very good play at 5'7". Beast 2, 
not a ton of interest in. Um, so, yeah, I, I kind of like playing Beef Stew when he's either getting, like, back up five or at the five. Um, I believe they actually played, like, uh, you know, Bagley was getting some back up five. I believe Wiseman got some back up five last game. So, Stew's playable, but I prefer him when he's at the five. Um, not going to get to guys like Burks. Kevin Knox getting low 20s minutes off the bench. He's playable, but he's really, really bad point per minute. Um, so, just know if you do play, like, some Kevin Knox, he's probably going to kill you more often than not. So, on to Phoenix, I guess the news that we'll monitor here is going to be Kevin Durant and Grayson Allen. If they are both in, then Booker, Katie, they just become more contrarian spend-ups for me. I think I'd rather prefer other spend-ups on this slate. Yusuf Nurkic's minutes have been ticking up of late. Um, if I knew he'd play 30-plus minutes, I would like him quite a bit, but there have been times where they have trolled his minutes, so more of a tournament play for me. Eric Gordon would be priced right or a bit overpriced, same with Grayson Allen. Then it would kind of take like all the wings out of play for me. Um, now, if they're both out, then that changes things. Then, like, Booker's be going to become one of the best spend-ups on the slate. Um, would feel a little bit better about Nurkic's minutes. Would be interested in him. Eric Gordon would have to do a ton more offensively. They're, he'd basically be, like, their second go-to guy and play decent minutes. I would like him at 5-9 quite a bit. Um, Katie Bates-Diop, Josh Koji. Um, Katie Bates-Diop, I think, would be a very solid value. Um, Josh Koji started... He, didn't, he got benched, um, I believe, um, just played bad, and he picked up two early fouls. I think that was a bit part of it. Um, so I would like him as a bounce-back candidate. So I would like, well, would like the wings there. And then we do have Little out, so I think that would help, you know, the wings as well. And then Yuta Watanabe would get some decent run off the bench and would be a fair value. On to Toronto. So I kind of want to see what Scotty finished with tonight, minutes-wise, because his minutes have been on a downtrend of late. Okay, finished with 36 tonight, had a pretty good game. So um, factoring in price points, I think everyone's probably going to go to Siakam. Now, if I if I knew they played similar minutes, I'd prefer Scotty Barnes, but the minutes kind of been up and down of late. I don't think any of them are priorities, but they're fine last piece filler plays for me. Both going to stuff the stat sheet. Both are going to play huge minutes, so I don't mind either. Dennis Schroeder, stat sheet stuffer, handling the ball pretty well right now for this team. A uh, ton of assists. I think he had nine assists tonight. He's fine. Don't love the price point. Jakob Hurdle, I believe, I don't know if he got into foul trouble tonight, but only played 25 minutes. Um... Another guy where, like, if I knew he pushed for 30 minutes, um, I would like him quite a bit. So, um, good point per minute. If he does get the minutes, he'll probably smash. Kind of like a Jonas Valanciunas type, right? Um, so, always interested in Pirtle for tournaments. I, I don't know if he got into foul trouble tonight or not. And then Gary Trent, always playable off the bench. Wished he was back down to his 4.1k price point, but playable. Not going to touch anyone else there. Let's move on to Utah. So, Markkanen, I believe, is already ruled out. And Clarkson is questionable. We have Kelly Olenek also questionable for this game. So if everyone's in, I think Clarkson's a fine play at the top. Um, he's just leading this way off team offensively. He'd have to do more with no marketing. So I would like Clarkson. Everyone else, I, I don't know if I get to anyone, to be honest. Like, the rotations are disgusting. They're spreading out the minutes. They're running like 12, 13, 11, 12 guys. It's just... It's disgusting, man. I, I don't think I'll be playing anyone else. Um, Kessler, Yurt, they're splitting the center minutes right now. Both will be fine tournament plays. Um, Collins minutes all over the place. It would just be tough for me to prioritize anyone here. Now, if Clarkson and Kelly Olenek are out, I believe what they did last time was Chris Dunn. It was Chris Dunn. Um, Yurt, seven... Simone Fonticeo, Keontae George, and John Collins. I would assume we would get a similar starting lineup there. Now, when this happened last time, Chris Dunn, he was absolutely smashing. I played him, only played 19 minutes. Now, if I knew he would get decent starter minutes and it wouldn't be like a spot start where he only gets like two rotations, I would like him a lot for value. Like if Chris Dunn got like 25 minutes tomorrow in the starting lineup, he would stand out as one of the best value plays on the slate. Um, so, Definitely like Dunn if he if those guys are out and he starts. Yurt, we'll see what they do at the starting lineup. Like if they start Walker Kessler, I really like Walker Kessler. If they start Yurt, then Yurt's a solid play. Walker Kessler just a tournament play. Keontae George would have to have to lead this team to the promised land. Solid point per minute. 
Stopping the stat sheet, I think he'd be a solid play at 6-1. Very, very safe. And then Collins minutes just like all, all over the place. Now, I, I did read, um, if you did play him this game, that he didn't play the fourth because you're at seven and Kelly Olenek were having a really, really good game. So with Olenek, if he's out, I would feel a lot, lot better about John Collins. And I'd be, uh, I think he'd be a solid play. So, and then Fontecheo, um had a big game last game, but definitely an outlier. Um, now that he is priced up, I'd honestly rather just take a Baji at a cheaper price point than play Fontecheo if those guys are out. Um, Baji, the better point per minute guy, probably gets low 20s minutes. Rather take low 20s minutes of Baji over like high 20s of uh, Fontecheo. All right, Memphis, good spot here. Um, I like the spot for Bain. I like the spot for Jaron. I mean, Jaron just should be able to feast here. He hasn't been good of late, but should keep the ownership down. Really good point per minute and does have an insane ceiling when he goes for like a couple blocks, a couple steals. So, like Jaron for tournaments, I like Bain for tournaments as well. This team's just been really, really bad, but they both have incredible ceilings. So, like both the uh, uh, Memphis main guys here, Santi Aldama just got benched last game for no reason, but I think normally um, we get low 30s minutes, which makes him a solid play, but be careful with the random benching last game. Bayambo, I think we get around 30 minutes, kind of like Goga. Um, I like the spot for him, so I, I like me some Bayambo. And then the guards, I I, I don't know what they're going to do here. Like I think Rose will probably get around 20 minutes regardless, which makes him a fine value. Um, they're, they're messing with like Roddy's. I, I don't understand what they're doing here, but like Roddy in play, not going to play Gilliard on to the Sixers. So if you want to play Embiid, I think he stands out as one of the best spin ups on the slate. So obviously I really like Embiid. Tyrese Maxey's been on another level of late, also playing huge minutes. He's going to play 35 plus minutes, even if the game blows out. Um, keep saying that every game, so you don't have to worry about blowouts with Tyrese Maxey. I think he's solid too. No issue paying that price point. Tobias Harris to Anthony Melton, they're just very, very safe plays to make sure play huge minutes. Both guys, you know, can do a little bit of statute stuffing. Tobias Harris, good rebounder. So they're very, very safe. Um, Batum, I think he's solid value, playing decent minutes. Um, not the best point per minute, but we don't have too much value right now. So I like Batum for value. It's disgusting, but it's fine. You saw big games for, like, Marcus Morris off the bench. You saw a big game for Pat Bev. I'll let the absolute slaps chase those. And then, uh, yeah, um, free free Robert Covington. Give our boys some more minutes, please. Uh, Pelican. So, CJ is going to be back. I'm gonna not going to lie to you guys. This team is a cross-off for me. Everyone's priced up, so no time there. All right, <clears throat> Houston, not the best spot here, but it's hard to deny what Sengen is doing right now. He's the, the the Rockets are running an extremely tight rotation, so I'm not going to say no. Like I still think Sengen, I still think Fred are both two pretty good plays, even not in the best spot. Well, we'll monitor who's available for Denver tomorrow, but they're just playing huge minutes right now. Um, so I like Sengen, I like Fred. Jalen bit price with me. Jabari just there for me, and Dylan Brooks is always playable, but priced right. And then Jason Tate, fine value. Impossible to say right now with Denver. They're all questionable. If everyone's in, it's just Jokic at the top for me. Now, if everyone's out, we get a, the same starting lineup of Reggie Jackson, KCP, Michael Porter Jr., DeAndre Jordan, Justin Holiday. Then there's a lot to like here. Then DeAndre Jordan would be one of the best value plays in the slate. Then Justin Holiday would be a really, really good value. Then Reggie Jackson would be one of the best plays in the mid-range. Then Michael Porter Jr. would be a really solid play. Um, Strother, Watson, those two guys would both be solid values. Um, Christian Braun just barely played. I don't know why, but um, yeah, there, there would just be a ton to like here for Denver. Last game of the night, guys. Not a ton in this game. Paul George, Kawhi Harden, they're all fine tournament plays for me. If I had to pick one, it's... Kawhi, I guess, given the price points, but they're all fine tournament plays. Russell Westbrook, overpriced. Zubac, just fair play. I think there are better center plays on this slate. Pal, priced right. Man, I think is an okay value, but also priced right. Not much here, guys. Uh, Thice will get the backup five. Um, playable value. Don't mind him. We don't have a ton of value right now on this slate. And then Sacramento. So, Savonis, Solid sped up. I think I prefer, you know, 80 for cheaper and bead for more. Fox, Priced worse bonuses, I'd rather just play Sabonis. We'll monitor Key and Murray. If he's out, it's going to be more minutes for, like, Monk, um, the Wings. I would like Monk. And then um, Doortail start would be a fine value. I think he got benched tonight, though. I'm not sure. Um, and then Barnes would be fine. He'll have to play big minutes. So I think that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. Hope you guys had a good night tonight, and I'll talk to you all in the next one.